Hi, everyone. Let me pull up the chat and such. Hold on just a second. I've got some uh, maneuvering around to do here for just a second while you guys come in. Hold on. Sorry about this, guys. Bear with me. Bear with me. Hold on just a second while I pop out the chat. Hold on. Uber, hello, my darling. Kayla Renee, hello. And Tawana, hello, my love. All right. I don't have my trusty sidekick here with me. I don't know what to do. Here we go. Here we are. All right. Let's get this back up. Lady Raiden, hello, my love. How are you? Oh, you know the photo bombers are right here, everybody. You know, they've got to they've got to say hello, you know. Can you hear me okay? Awesome. Okay, good. I hooked up my uh, my microphone here. So. Let's see if we got a couple more. Let me move out of the way, dude. You two need to go lay down, knuckleheads. Did we all have a good week this week? I hope. Look at me looking over the top of my glasses like my mother used to do to me. Oh, the older I get, the more I turn into my mother. Miss Kitty, hello, my dear. All right, let me let me tweet this out real quick. Okay, great. Maybe I'll figure all this stuff out one of these days. All right. Challenging week, huh, Tawana? I'm sorry, sweetheart. Lady Raiden, I've already responded back to your homework. I thought you did a great job on your homework. So if that's, you know, rushed, girl, you're 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 a star then, you know. Of course, you know, my pit bull decides to get a tennis ball and get all freaky over there. No, Tawana, it's, stay, honey, because this can, you know, maybe benefit you a little bit too, some of the stuff that we're going to discuss. Everybody's welcome. You don't have to be a, a student. All are welcome. I was going to say, Uber's not in the class, Tawana, so why don't you just stay, babe? Because um, the information um, is not just specific to the, the students. You know, if you want to learn a little bit more about what Wicca and witchcraft are, cool. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get started. And, you know, as we witches and Wiccans say, merry meet everybody. Um, I'm really thankful for those of you who were able to make it. Oh, no, honey. This is, you know, Wicca 101. You know, um, the intro video I did um, is on the channel. 
Um, and if you want to buy the books, um, they're available on Amazon. Um, just watch. You're doing fine, sweetheart. Don't worry. You're, you're allowed because everything is is, you know, generic enough that you're going to be able to follow along, um, without books or, or, you know, if, unless you really want to buy them and, and, you know, study. Exactly. So I get, uh, I get asked a lot. What is Wicca? what is witchcraft and to some people they're interchangeable some wiccans don't want to be called witches some witches don't want to be called wiccans okay so i'm going to kind of borrow a little bit from somebody um who really explained their thoughts on this to me i will unless you speak up in the chat um, I'm going to, you know, let you remain na nameless, but the way that they explained it, um, from the, the reading assignment that I gave was that Wicca is the overarching like structure to their religious belief systems. Um, and then witchcraft is the actual physical practice of that. Okay, so I kind of liken that to um, put it into some terms that more people are familiar with. Okay, Wicca is like the the quote unquote church. Okay, and it has the dogma or the religious rules and the practices associated with it, and then your witchcraft is your spell work, your rituals, your being able to learn magic um, and manifest change, okay? So it's pretty benign on the surface. And what I really like about this quote unquote church of mine is that it has evolved so much, but there are a lot of misconceptions about the origins of Wicca, how long it's been around, um, the origins of witchcraft, and exactly what those practices entail, okay? Um, I liken to say that, like, my spells, our rituals, or our sabbats, are like the high holy days, okay? That would be, you know, like a Rosh Hashanah. Hi, Gary, how are you, hun? Um, like a Rosh Hashanah or, you know, a Yom Kippur in Judaism, or it would be, you know, Christmas and Easter um, in the Christian faith. Well, our Sabbats are our high holy days, okay? And then we have rituals within that and our spell work, because our spells manifest change of sometimes they're like what I call prayer prayers with props for lack of a better term. Okay. So that kind of breaks things down in the simplest form that I can really think of. Okay. Um, but people don't really realize to understand Wicca and witchcraft, you have to kind of disseminate between what is the actual history and what has been kind of revised. Um, because a lot of times, even with, you know, regular, regular history outside of theology, our own history is re revised over time to fit certain agendas and politics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I like to kind of break this down um, because people always hear like Wicca referred to as the craft of the wise or the old craft or, um, you know, people say that they're hereditary Wiccans for generations and generations, you know, for hundreds of years. And most people do not realize witchcraft has been around for a very long time. And I'm going to go through a little bit of 
um, some high points of historical fact. Um, and then Wicca in and of itself as a writing down of ideology and theology is really new. It is really new in the grand scheme of various religions. Wicca is a very, very young religion in and of itself. So I'm going to um, put my specs on so I can see my notes. And we think about, you know, witchcraft. And you automatically, if you're an American, you think of um, the Salem witch trials, right? You think of um, the Inquisition in Europe where, you know, being accused of witch witchery and heresy meant, you know, certain death by torture, usually. Um, but the first, and I'm going to keep this to like the common era because we could go back ad nauseum and basically tr trace the roots of all religion to the Indus Valley um, in India. Um, and it's a lot of people don't want to hear that. There is a book out there. If you can get your hands on it for a decent price, it is called The Origins of Modern Witchcraft, and it was written by Ann Mora. Now, I'm going to tell you to um, keep it with a grain of salt because Ann can, the version, the, the, version, uh, like the first edition that I learned under, um, she had some pretty um, anti-Christian views in it that were really off-putting to me just in general. But when you got down to the actual history of it, of it, I was able to get past it to get to the history. And I just had to filter out, hi, Terry, welcome, welcome. Um, I had to filter out all of her personal kind of like views of Judeo-Christian um, tenants and just get down and just read the meat of the history. And in the common era, you have to stop and think. We like to think we're a lot more enlightened um, than we really have been. Um, because, you know, you can trace which craft back into, you know, BCE. It was practiced by, you know, um, the priests in Egypt, um, in ancient Egypt. It was practiced in Rome through their worship. Um, so, but let's keep this kind of recent, last couple thousand years, okay? So the first real mention anywhere of the practice of magic or mis mystical teachings um, was when the Romans brought the mystical teachings into Britain in 43 in the Common Era. In the grand scheme of the earth and history, as we've been able to document, that's not all that long ago when you, when you stop and think about it from a logical perspective. Um, it was in 1215 that papal canon law excommunicated all witches from the church. And then you had King James of Scotland. Um, in the Bible, there is this famous, often misused and misguided, um, verse, and I believe it's in Exodus, and I'm going to paraphrase it, and it's um, suffer not, you know, a witch shall not live kind of thing. Well, the problem is, is that the original texts were written in Aramaic, and it only takes one little stroke of a pen to misread or misinterpret something. And the original Aramaic was suffer not the poisoners. So people who poison 
other people, not witches. So a lot of misconceptions and such as that absolutely comes out of Exodus. But I mean, as early as Exodus in the book of books of Moses, there are mentions of sorcerers and, or poisoners. Um, and then it goes on through, um, I believe there are mentions again in the book of Daniel, if I'm not mistaken, Uber. Did I, did I get that for you, Uber? Because typically witches were in history were the healers because they were the ones that had a lot of the knowledge about the herbs and stuff. And what it was more referring to is those, those who conjure the dead and to like acts of uh, necromancy and it um, kind of looked down upon um, like divination even, um, which is kind of surprising um, because some of your prophets spoke to spirit. <laughs> so um, I'm a little bit, I haven't done as much research about those. Um, exactly, Lady Raiden. It's the differences between language. I mean, there could have been a word that wasn't exactly equivalent. And then you look at how many times because most of us, when we have a biblical reference, we reference like King James or the New International or something like that, which is yet another translation. And you've got to think that, you know, in the King James translation of the Bible, this was done by monks who did everything by hand and literally one little stroke in Latin is different and can completely change the meaning of a word. And depending on how it's placed in the sentence and how it's used. So that transference into like an English version translation um, can be very, very different from what the original Aramaic script may have been. So. Okay, I guess I got it right, Kitty. Kitty's giving me a clap. <laughs> so, you know, you got to stop and think that King James of Scotland um, wrote in 1579 this thing called, it was a paper on demonology and the North Berwick witches, okay? And then... He actually had, in 1591, he had all of the members of the North Berwick Coven burned alive. Um, so, and I think I had mentioned in one of the live streams with Uber Goober Lady about King James's um, definitions of demons and the hierarchy um, in his writings, that he did a lot of religious writings. Um, you know, as the head of the church. So, or his, as the head of his church. Um, so, you've got to think, um, he actually, dis, uh, King James of England declared witchcraft craft a capital crime in 1603. And exactly, Lady Raiden, Latin is a very, very complicated language. That's why I didn't bother to take it because it made my brain explode when I was in like eighth grade. So I just like, no, I'll stick to French and, and English, uh, French and Spanish. Um, so when you think about that, you also have to think about it wasn't until, believe it or not, the last public death of a witch a witch was stoned to death by mob in Texas in 1915. Um, that's pretty recent history. That's 100 years ago. They were stoning witches in the United States 
a hundred years ago, a little over a hundred years ago. Um, and you go forward and a guy pops onto the scene um, in the kind of like 30s and 40s. And he is intrigued by a text that was written by, um, in 1921, um, called The Witch Cult in Europe. And it was written by Margaret Murray, um, where she had a theory about um, an ancient goddess traditions, covens of 13, um, celebrations of then four sabbats. We have eight now under Wicca. And that's pretty recent. That's not even 100 years ago that this was written. And Gerald Gardner kind of framed Wicca around this, around the writings of Margaret Murray in 1921. And he actually star started um, the New Force Coven in England in 1947. Um, then in 1948, he introduces the concepts of some of like our magical tools, like athames, which is our ritual knife, and something called a book of shadows. So any of you guys that ever watched the show Charmed on TV, now you know who coined that term. It was coined 70 years ago by Gerald Gardner. Okay. That's not all that long ago. Um, prior to that, many witches did not write down a lot of anything because if you were caught with those texts, um, your spell work or anything like that, or your grimoire, um, you were tried for heresy and you were usually uh, killed. So a lot of witches prior to that never wrote anything down. A lot of things were passed down through an oral tradition, um, which is the way kind of that I learned some stuff that I didn't even know at the time um, fell under, you know, witchcraft or Southern conjure from my grandmother, because the way that we learned a lot of stuff in my mountain culture is by oral traditions. Um, because a lot of people, even though both my grandparents were, you know, my father's side were college graduates and, you know, everyone in my family were educated compared to the norm where I'm from, um, it's still most people, a lot of people, e even in the, you know, early 20s and 30s did not read or didn't read well. My uncle had to drop out of school when he was nine years old and go to work uh, in the field. So he only had like a third or fourth grade education. Um, so a lot of the traditions were oral. Um, so then there were a couple of other people who figured very, very highly into the big picture of things. And Gerald Gardner is the one that came up with the dogma or the overarching uh, tenets of what is now called Gardnerian tradition witchcraft. He had a couple of people, believe it or not, that were very influential and, um, Put a one in the chat if you've ever heard of Aleister Crowley and you know pretty much what he might be infamous for. Put a one in the chat if you recognize the name Aleister Crowley. I'm waiting. Such a lag. Okay. Lady Raiden, I know you know who Aleister Crowley is. Anyhow, Aleister Crowley is widely attributed um, with having, okay, Kitty knows who he is. Um, Aleister Crowley is widely attributed. He published several writings. He was a compatriot of Gerald Gardner, and he wrote this, doc, this book called The Book of the Law, um, but he's also attributed as 
kind of like one of the founding fathers of Satanism, which is kind of another revisionist history. Um, a lot of what he did um, kind of follows uh, Satanist kind of stuff, but Wiccans don't believe in the existence of Satan. Um, so he didn't come up with Satanism per se. Um, but he didn't have a lot of ethics where magic was concerned, where Gerald Gardner took a little bit of a different uh, route. Um, he also had some very influential people that he initiated into Gardnerian witchcraft. The first lady is Doreen Valiente. And she came up with a lot of the most influential writings in the Wiccan Gardnerian tradition. And um, she wrote this, this poem called The Charge of the Goddess. Um, Okay, Tawana, there could be a pretty big, there's usually like a 30 to 45 second lag. Um, but he also had someone named Raymond Buckland. And Raymond Buckland um, was the one who is widely attributed with bringing Wicca to the United States in the 60s. And I happen to have um, a couple of Raymond Buckland's books up on um, my shelf. Doreen Valiente also later on in the 70s came up with the concept of self-initiation. In other words, Gardner said you had to belong to a coven. You had to be initiated into the coven. Your lineage has to be, you know, um, traced back. Um, so you have to be almost invited in and that's because they handed over their book of shadows and part of your studies was copying that book of shadows. Another one is Alexander Sanders and he went on to leave the Gardnerian tradition and, um, he kind of had a big falling out with, uh, Gerald Gardner because he began calling himself, Alexander Sanders did, the king of the witches. And he went on to found what is called Alexandrian uh, witchcraft or Wicca. But Raymond Buckland also went on to create what is called Sayax Wicca, which is Anglo-Saxon Wicca. Um, and Doreen Valiente created the idea. She went on, she left uh, Gardner's Coven in 1957, started her own uh, because they didn't agree on the fact that women should be equal within the coven um, or Gerald Gardner said that they should have a lesser role in a coven. So it's very important, you know, now with the explosive growth, Lady Raiden, exactly. I have the same one. Um, it, Doreen Valiente's idea of self initiation, in other words, you can be a solitary practicing Wiccan, you don't have to belong to a coven. You don't have to be initiated by a high priest or a high priestess, et cetera, et cetera. You can self-initiate and study from books like she wrote, like that uh, Raymond Buckland wrote. And there was a guy named Scott Cunningham who wrote Solitary Wicca in 1988. And he introduced the idea of self-initiation, especially to the U.S. And that is when things really blew up um, because um, most of the Wiccans, even though I am a, an advanced priestess in the tradition of the witches circle out of Occoquan, Virginia, I studied under 
my head high priestess, Sam Harvey, um, and my head high priest, John Morani, who's since left the, the tradition. Um, you can sell, I had self initiated before then. I just formalized my training with my head high priestess. Um, but I'm more of an eclectic solitary. In other words, most of the stuff I do, I practice alone. There are certain times that I can make the rituals, you know, the open rituals of my tradition and I go down for them. Um, cause it's about a 40 minute drive from my house to get there. Um, so, you know, most of the stuff that I do, I do on my own or I'm a solitary practitioner. So that in and of itself, Wicca, when I went through with my high priestess, with my tradition, Wicca was, and I believe still is, the fastest growing religion in the United States. Okay. Now, one thing that really kind of is surprising um, Lady Raiden, they are mine as well. Scott Cunningham went to write books on what we call correspondences. In other words, what things do. And he did them for crystals and herbs and essential oils. Um, so, you know, my co I actually have two copies because I pretty much wore the first one out. Um Terry, it still is. Okay, I knew it was when I went through, but that was a long time ago. Um, but one thing about it is even though we think we're, you know, a lot more enlightened now and, you know, gee, the 70s and, you know, even 88, that was 30 years ago. Well, guess what? Even though there were like state level decisions um, by Supreme Courts that recognized Wicca as a an official religion um, and that um, the IRS, our, our governing taxing body here in the United States, um, yes, they can, Tawana. There are witches that are Wiccans, that are Christian, and they're called Trinitarians. So there are Christian witches. And a lot of um, like the um, Southern Conjure, um, a lot of practitioners of hoodoo, um, they're Christian uh, because they're not, that was more attuned through the uh, Christian Bible than, and doing quote unquote root work didn't just mean the roots that are around in your area. It meant the root of the spirit and your connection with God and a higher power. So a lot of them like Southern conjure and even hoodoo and voodoo, they're based in Christianity. Yes, I do have blessed metals that I use. I've got, um, I'm not, I've never been Catholic. Um, my best friend was, that's the closest. And, you know, the only time that I've really, you know, participated in a Catholic uh, um, ceremony of any kind um, was her wedding. And um, I was like, you know, just put me over in the corner with the other wasps that don't know how to, you know, when to kneel or what to say, you know, just put me in the corner and ignore me. Um Exactly. There's also Santeria and that's practiced a lot in my um, area because there's a really large um, Hispanic population um, in Prince William County where I live. So Santeria is, you know, a big one. Um, but anyhow, it wasn't until 2007 until the United States Department of Affairs recognized Wicca as a religion. Um, and that's very surprising. And it took a mother suing the Department of Veterans Affairs to allow them to, to make them, force them to inscribe a pentagram on her son's headstone. It took a lawsuit for them to 
actually recognize Wicca. And now Wicca is actually included along with some other um, pagan, uh, like Zoroastrianism, um, heathenry, and other things. They're actually in the, um, uh, like the chaplain's handbook now. Um, and I know like when I was with the fire department, our chaplains were not well versed. Um, and I, I honestly didn't really come out of the broom closet until like the last five years of my career. Um, because one, it wasn't cool to be in public safety and be a witch. And number two, I was a law enforcement officer on top of it. So that was even more frowned upon. Um, but you know, uh, it came time that they needed somebody um, that knew something about and to be able to help throw the BS flag at their curriculum at the academy on cult religions <clears throat> like Wicca um, and had to get their teaching straight and fixed at our criminal justice academy because I had a cow when I went to one of their classes. Um, so anyhow, there's a little bit of the history and everybody is usually familiar with something called the Wiccan read. And they remember the eight words, the big, the eight big words and it harm none do as ye will. And that's pretty much well and true. Um, a lot of people, um, attributed this to Gerald Gardner. Gerald Gardner didn't write it. There is a lot of, um, let me say, there is a lot of contention as to who actually authored the Wiccan read. Most people believe it was Doreen Valiente. Um, and it came from some um, conferences that she gave about uh, Gerald Gardner's works and everything like that. Um, so... But that overarching theme is one thing that Wiccans do ascribe to, that what they do does no harm, okay? So where many hereditary witches do not ascribe to that. And um, exactly, Tawana, it is crazy. Um a lot of witches are true hereditary witches. They are interested in the law of cause and effect, okay? Wiccans also belong, believe in the law of three. You know, whatever I put out comes back on me three times over. Um, I was taught that as a Christian, as a child, my mother taught me those concepts. Um, witches usually don't believe in karma. Most Wiccans do because karma is, you know, a Hindu concept. So those are some very distinct differences between Wicca and witchcraft. And last night, Uber, um, you know, said, well, what about, you know, good, you know, good witches and bad witches, right? Um, and Jenna and I had a little bit of, um, you know, when it comes to protecting someone in my family, you know what? I'll take the karmic hit, but I'm going to do what I need to do to quote unquote, what I call witch slap someone to keep them from causing more harm to someone in my, or putting someone in my family or my loved ones in harm's way. Um, whether that's returning their, you know, malignant magic back to them um, at an increase or I bind them from being able, you know, I'm affecting their free will by binding them so that they can't hurt us anymore so that it's for the good above all. Okay. So those are some of the concepts um, that are involved in Wicca and witchcraft. And, you know, I went over what the 13 principles of witchcraft are in a live stream. You like witch slap. I knew you would, Uber. Um, I went um, over the 13 principles of witchcraft. Um, these 13 principles of 
witchcraft I discussed in a um, um, live stream with Uber, um, gosh, some months back, when people were using the term witch to describe the crappy behavior of a particular, <clears throat> I'm just going to say, member of the community who um, needs to take a few lessons before they start preaching the Bible. They need to like maybe read it and understand what it's saying before they start preaching on their channel. Just saying. Um, and people were using the term witch and calling her an evil witch to describe her behavior. And there were several of us who um, said we didn't, we wouldn't claim her. We, we refused to claim her because she's, you know, so vile that none of us would claim her until finally I lost my shit. I'm not going to lie. I lost my shit. Um, about, okay, I will, Tawana, if I can't find it real quick on Uber's channel, um, Uber, I don't know if you can find it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but if, you know, they don't drop it in the chat here, Tawana, I will, um, DM it to you. Okay. Um, so, um, Uber invited me on her channel to talk about witches and Wiccans and what we believe. And I went over the 13 principles of witchcraft. And one of the big standouts of the 13 principles, the 13 principles were created, um, a council of American witches got together in the fall of 1973. And I, I think there were like 73, I think, from all different, um, you know, covens and traditions from all over the, the country. Um, and they created these 13 principles of witchcraft or Wicca. And one of the very ones that is very surprising to most people. Okay, Uber. Um, is that we do not acknowledge the existence of Satan. Okay. We do acknowledge evil because for good, if you've got light, there's dark. If there's evil, there's good. Everything is a balance. Okay. And it's hard to say that I worship the devil as a witch or a Wiccan when I do not recognize the existence of Satan himself as the absolute being of absolute evil. Okay. Have I run up on demons in my paranormal investigations? Yes. Do I believe in demons? Yes, because they're evil entities. I do believe in angels who are beings of light. So you have that balance with everything. There's an ebb, there's a flow. Okay. And that's what a lot of those 13 principles really sat down and explained to people from the outside looking in what witchcraft and what Wicca is really about. And we're more in tune with nature. Wicca is a nature based religion. Okay. Spirit wolf. Exactly. As above, so is below. Um, so with that guys, um, if you've got questions, hit me up here in the chat. I'll look in the chat. Um, you know, it's, um, there are a lot of misconceptions about Wicca and what it is and isn't and where it came from. There's a lot of misconceptions about witchcraft and witches and people who don't carry that 
that Wiccan moniker. Um, in my tradition, the terms were interchangeable. It for other people, they're not. Okay. Um, like I said, Wicca is like our church, and then the witchcraft is our spiritual practice, okay, or my spiritual practice. Most of my rituals and spells that I have in my Book of Shadows or my grimoire, I, you know, I have two. My Book of Shadows is my Book of Rituals, and my grimoire is my book of spells and like herb blends, incense blends, healing recipes and stuff like that. So I've got a grimoire and I've got a book of shadows. Um, and my book of shadows is strictly to my spiritual path, where it came from and my rituals. So, you know, what things mean to me can be completely different than what means to Lady Raiden. Um, blue can mean, you know, one thing to me and it can mean something else to Lady Raiden. And that's one of the things that I love about my practice now is that it's an, it's, I'm an eclectic witch. I do what feels right. I do not allow myself to be bound by the tenets of man's interpretation of how I should react with the divine and interact with the divine. Instead, I follow what is here in my heart. I don't let my logical mind limit me to the possibilities um, because magic is the, the, the core of my practice you know, in being attuned, I do a lot of ceremonies to heal the earth. I do a lot of healing. I do a lot of self-introspection in the healing of myself. And when you don't become bound by dogma that way, you actually, um, I believe, end up being a more spiritual and more higher evolved as a human um, on this plane so that you're a higher spirit when you pass on into the afterlife. Uh, Tawana, Lord have mercy, girl. <laughs> Anyhow, do you guys have any questions? I mean, because I wanted to keep this under an hour. I didn't want to ruin your Saturdays for too long or anything like that. Um, I just recorded um, session two, which is on uh, meditation. And for any of you who are struggling with being able to quiet your mind, find peace, find an inner peace, next week's going to be great. It can be something very personal, doing things on your own. Um, and that's one thing I loved about um, okay, I'll find it Uber. Um, the one thing that I absolutely love about Doreen Valiente's idea of self-initiation, you absolutely can self-initiate and, you know, you can study at your own pace. Things that feel right to you are right to you. It's something that's very personal and it's very, um, and that's why it's called, there are more eclectic witches practicing as solitaries now than there are probably that are in covens. Um, and even my coven, my tradition, is an eclectic tradition. When I was going through, my head high priestess was very uh, to eclect eclectic. In other words, I'm not bound by, um, like I said, like the rules of Alexandrian or Gardnerian rules. I do what feels right. That's an eclectic and a not, that's me and my lousy Southern accents. E C L E C T I C eclectic. I'm an eclectic witch. In other words, I do what feels right. There are things that are called traditions so I belong to tradition of the witch's circle. That is the name of my coven that I trained with. So 
my head high priestess at the time very, very specifically was into primarily Egyptian witchcraft. In other words, working with Egypt, ancient Egyptian, Egyptian gods and goddesses, you know, like Isis and Osiris and Horus. You guys are, are probably familiar with those three, right? Um, now, she has evolved even in her practice. Here we go, you know, 15 years later, she has children. She's got two boys. One of them is special needs. And she had um, an abusive mate and she's left him. And um, exactly, pull elements from Wicca, Western, Buddhism, Hinduism, whatever makes you, makes you happy. Um, so I started out very firmly planted working with basically Celtic based mythology, gods and goddesses. Okay. The, those were the ones that I identified with, but like my HP now, she is full blown into Norse heathenry, Nordic heathenry, working with like Freya and Odin and Thor, that pantheon. So you know, not being limited to like one set of beliefs. I pull parts of what feels right in my heart that makes me a spiritually stronger person. It makes me a better person because I am more compassionate to others. I am more in tune with what's going on around me from the from an environmental perspective um many of you know that i was a fire marshal many of you know that i was you know with the fire department for 31 years but a lot of you don't realize that my specialty was hazardous materials and one of the things that i had to um do is inspect big things like tank farms we have pipelines that feed two major airports running right through my county and through the county where I worked. And um, we have railway si rail systems that bring hazardous materials right through the middle of the county. Um, and like if you guys have heard of Bakken crude oil, it's a more unstable than like petroleum that's been got out of the, you know, uh, golf or traditional drilling methods. Um, oh, Terry, that's awesome. Um, so Bakken is a lot more unstable form of petroleum. Okay. And it's a lot more volatile. Um, and Bakken gets, you know, transported right through our counties. And with our proximity to uh, DC, there were, you know, anthrax threats when, you know, many post 9-11, I lost, I, I can't even tell you how many times. Um, so um, that was always a big part of me was caring about the environment because I also had to do risk assessments of what risk these facilities post and then do evacuation plans if we had a major failure. And in my 31 years, I can't tell you how many pipeline incidents I ran that were, you know, horrific. Um, and the last one was my last year in. Um, there was a part of the colonial pipeline that had been leaking for probably over a year um, and they just closed the, re the actual remediation of that down. And I return retired at the end of 2016. And that release happened in 2015. So, you know, whatever feels right to you in your heart is what I suggest that you do. Don't let anything that I say deter you. Don't let anything that I say encourage you. You have to do what's right in your heart and follow what is right in your heart. And I will never forget, even though, you know, my mom and dad were primitive Baptists and my dad, though, my mom was the one that always wanted to go to church. My dad rarely went to the church unless somebody was getting married or somebody died. So those were about the only two times I ever remember seeing my dad in a suit and in church. And my dad always said, I don't need four walls and a roof 
to have a relationship with the good Lord. Jesus had his sermon on the Mount. I have my outside. And that really resonated with me. And I think that that influence of my dad having to march to the beat of my own drum really laid the foundation for me not staying within the norm where my spirituality is concerned. So, you know, when you, when you do a little bit of research and you start really looking into things, find something that's right for you. Don't let me tell you how to believe and don't let anybody else tell you how to believe. So anybody else? Exactly. Tawana. Exactly. God love my dad. That's, that's who I got my, my, um, meet, meet to, you know, march to the beat of my own drum spirit from was my dad. I got my fiery disposition from my mother, but that spirit I got from my dad. So, all righty guys. Um, oh, thank you, honey. Um, I appreciate that Tawana. That means a lot. Um, so for those of you who are next week, will be meditation. I'm going to post the videos tomorrow. Um, oh, awesome, Abby. That's awesome. Um, same here, Kitty. You know, my dad was a big reader and just taught a lot of different things. And, you know, my parents, I, I, I look back and I, I was so blessed to have had the parents that I had, um, truly compared to a lot of people. I mean, even my better half, his mom's batshit crazy. So this next week is meditation. Everybody can benefit from that. Um, being able to just free your mind of the daily crap, find a nice calm center and to connect with a higher power in whatever way you want to. So that's what tomorrow to the video will be going up. The video portion will be going up tomorrow. Um, morning unless I get a wild hair and get it finished edited and uploaded later tonight. It may go up tonight. Um, and then live stream next week. Um, same thing. We'll be talking about meditation and those concepts um, and being able to really work at stilling the mind um, and letting go of the crap that binds you down. Okay. Awesome. All righty, guys. Um, everybody is welcome. Don't don't think that you've got to buy books and everything, um, because usually in the description box of the videos, um, Terry, I use meditation every night to help bring me down. You know, to let me let go of everything. In the description box of the like quote unquote teaching videos, not the live streams, but the teaching videos is usually a copy of the syllabus, which is, you know, what we're going to be talking about each week. And it's also got a handout that you can print out and follow along. So you don't have to buy the books, but the books really enrich the journey. If you are really serious about studying Wiccan witchcraft, because week three, we're going to start getting into the actual kind of like, dogma of God and goddess and then get into elements and moon magic and the sabbats and the espots and everything like that. So this is all laying the, the foundation. Okay. So with that guys, you know what I always say, Mary, we did meet Mary. We will part until we marry meet again. Until then guys be well and walk in love and light. I love you guys. Bye.